What's going on guys? Victor here. Beautiful 4th of July weekend. We got the whole gang. <laughs> Alright, say hi everybody. Hi. Hey, hey, hey. Hello. And we got Megan down Stop. from Virginia. <laughs> So Bricky's gonna be filming a really neat video for you guys, kind of explaining how to find spots, how to look for lobster. Florida lobster mini season is about to be upon us, so we're gonna do a little scouting, try to get some new spots, as well as I'm gonna be looking for lionfish, the invasive lionfish, so see you guys underwater. Fish 
Today's video is actually sponsored by Undoes It. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the protectants. I just cleaned the front of our windshield with a protectant. You know, we're in Florida, the sun beats down on everything. Keeping your things looking nice is just gonna give you a much more pleasant boating experience, and it's just gonna increase the uh, lifespan of your things. Beautiful and shiny. There are some things that are always exposed to the sun, like this bow rail right here. You take a little microfiber cloth, work it into your stainless steel bow rail, take another clean microfiber cloth, and then just make sure there's no streaks. Now you got a nice shiny bow rail and it's gonna protect it from the sun. So aside from using it on the boat, we've also been using it on our patio furniture. Not only did we revive the color, but we're gonna get a longer lasting shine because the protectant blocks UV fading. The protectant is extremely easy to use, works on a ton of different surfaces, and it just makes sense to protect the things you get so much enjoyment out of. Big thank you once again to Undoes It for sponsoring today's video. One reason I really love their products is because they have multiple uses. You can use it on your car, RV, patio furniture, so it's kind of like a one bottle, does it all type thing. I'm gonna have a link to them in the description box below as well as on the screen here. Now let's fillet some lionfish. It's only bad if you were to go like this. <laughs> If you were to stab your hand onto them like this, you see that right there? Then you're gonna have a bad time. You touch them like this all day long. Nothing's gonna happen to you. You touch them like this, no problemo. The second you go like this is when you're gonna have a bad day. All right, so this is the lionfish. Not very big. When you guys see them underwater, they look so much bigger than when you actually take them out of the water. And they make themselves look huge. They puff up all these fins. You guys see his pectoral fin gets huge. He makes himself look really big towards predators. Absolutely beautiful fish. And the reason they're invasive, these came here. The only reason they're in the Atlantic and in the Caribbean is because of the aquarium trade. So people had these in their aquariums. When they wanted to get rid of them, they probably released them into a canal or the ocean or the beach and they flourished. When people say they have no natural predators, I don't know if I necessarily believe that, especially with today's video you guys saw that nurse shark devoured this thing. Whether or not it would have eaten it if it wasn't injured, I don't know. But, so these are the venomous spines you have to worry about. They got 13 up top. So along the dorsal side of the fish, you got those. You do not want to go like that, like Brooke was saying. And then here along the anal fin, you have three more. And then they have one venomous spine in the pelvic fin. So just gotta be super careful when you're filleting this guy and just make sure you don't accidentally touch it. But as far as filleting it, it should be just like any other fish. You just gotta be observant of what you're doing. And a nice small fillet knife is very practical and something that's flexible like this six inch Dexter. Lion fish are very voracious. That's why our scientists really don't like them being in these waters. They have a really big rib cage and they just have a huge appetite for their size. They just eat all the little baby fish on the reef. Look how white. Yeah, I mean, it's about as white as it gets. Real pretty. Lots of I mean, little at, tiny baby scales. Yep. You definitely gotta load up on them if you wanna have a big family meal, but I'm just gonna make a little appetizer out of this guy. And even if you guys see these and don't plan on eating them, our state biologists recommend that you kill them regardless. You don't want to leave them on the reef. Another thing that um, people say that you can do is you can use scissors and chop off all of those poisonous um, fins. But as long as you're careful, you don't have to take that extra step. As long as you're careful with what you're doing. Right, Vic? Right. And Rick and I were in the Keys one time with our buddy Anthony Lasala, if you're watching. We were diving. He had no idea what a lionfish was. He had the bright idea of trying to grab one because it's a real pretty fish. Barehanded, his hand blew up to the size of a Mickey Mouse glove. He ended up in the ER. Didn't have to go to the ER, but if you are someone who has really bad allergies, it could potentially be deadly. So that's what it looks like. You guys see, they don't have a lot, but if there's areas where you can go and load up on these and get 30 at a time. I know a lot of scuba divers get them. So you could definitely make a meal out of it if you got a bunch of them. And they do get bigger than this. This is about the average size, but they do get considerably bigger. Skin this guy off. No. 
no bloodline. Not a trace of a bloodline. That's how you know this is a good fish. So now I'll catch you guys in the kitchen. That's all the line fish. I already caught them very thin. We're gonna do a sashimi crudo style dish tonight with some very vibrant fruits and veggies. Um, this is actually scamp grouper we had in the freezer from our last Panama City trip. You guys are always saying, why are you taking so many fish? Here's the proof, we actually eat it. Scamp grouper is one of the only fish that I really enjoy freezing because it freezes so well. It doesn't have much of a bloodline. It doesn't get fishy or foul tasting, just a real good fish, but still, any of you guys at home who know um, scamp grouper, scamp grouper is about as white as it gets. Look at that. That's the lionfish in this hand. Lionfish is some good stuff. So what we're gonna do is make a little um, dressing, I guess you could say, for our dish. These guys right here, I seriously challenge you guys. I'm 29 years old and I'm constantly learning new things and getting out of my comfort zone when it comes to food. The other day, Brooke and I were in Whole Foods. These little guys are the most flavorful little tropical berries you've ever tasted. These are called gooseberries. They're orange, they kind of look like little tomatoes. Super tart, yet sweet, just a real, it, it, they taste like they would grow on a deserted island in the middle of nowhere. That's what they taste like. They just taste really good. We have some minced gooseberries in here, a little bit of ginger, some cilantro, and this is gonna be the base for our dressing. So we're gonna go in with some soy sauce, and this is all the eyeball. This is gonna be the salinity, some soy. Now the gooseberries are sweet, but to add a little more natural sweetness, because they're not that sweet, we're gonna go in with a little bit of honey, as well as we're gonna go in with sesame oil. So if you didn't wanna really go on an Asian route, you guys could go with more of a parsley style, go with an olive oil, just change up your veggies and you can pretty much do the same thing. So we're gonna go in with some sesame oil. I'm gonna do about a tablespoon. Rice vinegar. We're gonna give this a good mix. I really wanted to incorporate the gooseberry two ways into this dish, both in its just natural state and then also kind of get some of that flavor to go into our little vinaigrette here. Here's gonna be the fun part. Now's where we assemble. It's just Brick and I, so I'm gonna use my hands. When it comes to plating, for some reason, there is beauty in chaos. There's beauty in things looking like they're in, in order, but there's also beauty in things looking like they're kind of just all over the place. So we're going down with our cucumber. This is sliced radish, as well as some sliced cucumber. And as you guys can tell, it's, it's healthy. I mean, aside from the little bit of sesame oil in there, there's really not many calories, okay? Now, we're just gonna sprinkle some of our gooseberries all along here. You want a little tip? You know how to make a plate look good? Use different colors. It makes a world of difference. Contrasting colors is the important thing. Scatter our line fish around. I actually went to Whole Foods today, believe it or not, looking to buy line fish. I am not someone who buys fish because we catch so much of it, obviously. They didn't have any. I actually called three other fish markets, so if you guys do get your hands on line fish, it's a real treat. It's one of those things that you only really can experience as a sportsman or as a diver. Now we're gonna go down with some scamp grouper. These are pea shoots. They can have a very fresh, but also slightly bitter flavor, kind of like arugula. Sometimes you get pea shoots and they're just super crisp, not bitter like real fresh tasting. Sometimes they're a little bitter, but it, 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 it adds a nice note to your dish. We drizzle our dressing, as you could call it. Our gooseberry, sesame oil, soy, honey, vinegar, vinaigrette, kind of all along here. Looks fancy, but it's really not. But I can tell you that it is going to taste delicious. 
And I'm not trying to mask the flavor of the lion fish, it's just, you know, I was trying to think of what I could do with such a little amount of fish to kind of make it go far, and this is basically what I came up with. There we go. Now Bricky and I can dig in. Here's the raw, unfiltered, unbiased first bite. What are the little seeds from? The seeds are from the gooseberries. Oh. Yes. So we don't really know if we're getting lionfish or... Um, that's lionfish right there. What is this? That's scamp grouper, I believe. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Man, that's good. Mmm. Mm. And you're not really a sashimi type girl. I like whatever new dressing that you made it. It's delicious, isn't it? Let's see. This is another piece of scamp. How do you know? Because the scamp, the scamp's much bigger. Like this is a piece of lionfish right here. Okay, that is a piece of lionfish, guys. What is this? That's scamp. Not bad for frozen fish, huh? Mm-mm. Delicious. The scamps, a nine out of 10. The lionfish is a 10 out of 10. But then again, it's fresh and it hasn't been frozen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you taste you taste the difference, right? You can also kinda tell that the other one might have been frozen. Yes, a little bit. Like the, like you said, the lionfish is a 10 out of 10, where the other one is not. But scam grouper is an amazing fish. But the fact that the lionfish can out shine it like that might have to just do with how fresh it is yes yeah, small but mighty in flavor gooseberries like victor was saying a very very interesting fruit but very good you got all the different textures going on you got the radish is super crunchy the gooseberries crunchy on the outside yet really soft and delicate on the inside pea shoots add a real nice just fresh flavor um vinaigrette good a nice little balance of flavors and you know, this is a really nice way to enjoy fish with your family, with your friends, with your wife or husband, and it makes a little bit of fish go a long way. Yeah. Also a very healthy way to eat fish. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys see the shirts we're wearing, these are our Florida Lobster Co. shirts. Brooke had these designed. She's shipping them out to you guys as well as the lobster nets. I know this was a dive video, so we're, in, we're getting full swing into dive season. We got Florida lobster mini season coming up as well as opening season. So if you guys have not gotten your nets yet, it's about to get real crazy. So I highly suggest check out the website. We're gonna have it linked below for you guys as well as on the screen here, floridalobsternets.com. We're a small business. I mean, this is how we make our livelihood. If you guys wanna support us, I know you guys always ask about merch, it's this. And then another big thank you to Undoes It for sponsoring today's video. That's another way, you know, we're a small business. They support us and we support the companies that support us. We get so many emails from different companies. We would never promote something that we don't use ourselves. And I think that's really important to be transparent with you guys because quite frankly, we turn, turn down thousands of dollars for all sorts of crazy companies, but I would never want to promote something I wouldn't use myself. So once again, Thank you so much. I am headed to the Keys tomorrow morning to film a bridge video for you guys. Until the next one, see ya.